Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and today I want to show you how to go about tuning in our harmonics. So if you ever forget your tuner on a gig, this is a really nifty technique to ensure that your bass guitar is in tune. It can also help you develop your ear. So if you're interested in doing that, make sure you check this lesson out all the way to the end. Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and today's lesson is all about how to tune with harmonics. But first of all, let's talk about what harmonics actually are. Harmonics are these amazingly pure notes that you can get on the bass guitar. In fact, you can get them on all stringed instruments. And in fact, every instrument has them to a certain degree, but they're really, really prevalent on instruments like the bass guitar. And what we can do is we can actually use them to create music. And bass players like Jaco Pastorius started doing this in the 70s when they started really pushing the boundaries of what the bass guitar was capable of doing. But your first step to getting comfortable with the idea of harmonics is to actually use them to tune with. So let's talk about how to create a harmonic first of all on the bass. It's really quite straightforward. All we need to do is literally lay our finger very, very softly over specific points of the string. And I'm gonna uh, give you a map which goes with this lesson. It's a download where you can actually see where all the harmonics lie on the bass guitar. So you can have a really good experiment with that one. And it will also show you how to tune with harmonics too. So make sure you grab that one too. So we have some very prevalent harmonics um, at the 12th fret at the seventh and at the fifth fret too. And all we do to get the harmonic is literally lay our finger very, very softly like that and literally pull it away. It's worth striking fairly hard with your right hand. That will really help pull the tone out of the note. So let's talk about why we might want to tune with harmonics. First of all, I'm a really massive fan of electronic tuners. I love these little snark guys. Um, I think they're amazing little tuners. A few years ago, there was this sort of snobbery going around the bass guitar world of using clip-on tuners, but quite frankly, they are so accurate. I love them, so convenient just to be able to put them on the end of your neck. That's not to say using a tuner on a foot pedal one or one that you push in the side or one on your mobile phone, equally as good, really, really useful, really accurate. Uh, you can do the silent tuning thing. So I'm a big advocate of the electronic ones, but tuning the instrument to itself using harmonics is a really good way of cross-referencing yourself. Just checking there isn't a fault with the tuner or you haven't misread on there because Training your ears up will always be that kind of confirmation that the instrument is in tune, or perhaps you might have tuned the wrong peg accidentally, or something's gone awry and you can use the, tune, um, the harmonics to double check. One thing I always do is when I get the bass out of the case for the first time, I will literally play the harmonics because like that, because it will give me a bearing to know how in tune the instrument actually is at that moment in time. Sometimes I may not even get the tuner out if I really feel and I'm really confident that it's actually really in tune. So it's a good way, in some respects, our ears never lie in that situation and it's good to really sharpen the skills up with doing that. So let me show you how tuning with harmonics actually works. So what we need to do is take our third finger um, of our fretting hand and place it over the seventh fret on the G string like so and pull the harmonic out like that. Play nice and hard with your right hand. That will really get it to sound good. And then take your first finger and place it over the fifth fret on the D string, like that. And what you'll discover is that they are an identical pitch. And what you're playing is two D notes there. You're sounding the pitch D. And the idea is we tune them together so they sound exactly the same. Now we can take this concept down the string like that and play the seventh fret on the D string and at this on the A string like that at the fifth fret. So seventh fret on the D string and fifth fret on the A string will give us the pitch A like that. And we can take exactly the same thing again and play an E string or play an E at the seventh fret on the A string and then 
and we get an E there at the fifth fret on the E string like so. And if you play a five string, you can continue that on down onto the string below if you've got that. So we end up with this shape that we can transfer like this. And when we're actually tuning, what we're listening for is this whirring sound. And if I like that, what I'm going to do is actually detune the instrument a little bit. I'm going to take the D down a little bit and actually pull it back up like this. So can you hear that not the same pitch? It's worth always noting that we pluck, we sort of always rake with our right hand like this because that enables, if we use our hand like a claw like that, to let both notes ring at the same time, which is really useful. And then, okay, take it up again. And what you'll start to notice is that whirring slows down a little and everything just starts becoming, I guess, a little bit harmonious and sounds good. And you'll get to a point where it just sits really nicely. Sometimes when they're really close together, it can be hard to hear. So what you can do is actually like that, put, sort of take it down half a turn and slowly bring it back up. That's a good little trick to pulling it together like that. And then we can do exactly the same thing on the string below. That's gone above. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. And then, like, yeah, that's, okay. This takes a little bit of practice, but once you get used to it, it's a really, really good way of double checking yourself. Now, there are a few issues with tuning like this. Number one is that you're actually tuning the instrument to itself, which is the cool thing. And, but what you've got to appreciate is the first note needs to be right. If, it, that's, if it's a, uh, a little bit out, um, the whole instrument will end up slightly out. So you've always got to try and make sure that your first note is bang on. One way you could do that is to actually say tune to get the piano player if you're in a band to actually play a note or another uh, musician to do that and actually get that together and actually make sure they actually sit really nicely together and then tune the bass from that point forward. The other issue is if you make a slight mistake, say that way your D string is very slightly sharp, for instance, um, it's, uh, it can actually carry on that slight error across all the strings. And so you end up with this guitar, which is sometimes even more slightly out of tune. And the last, I guess, kind of slight issue that you should be aware of doing with it, or it's just a challenge, I guess, is that you actually need to be able to hear the bass. And so silent tuning isn't always possible. And if you're gonna annoy people by going ding, 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 like that, um, it can cause problems. So if you need to silent tune, I would always recommend using a tuner like this. But as I said, you, tuning with harmonics is one of those things, it's a really useful thing to do. It can really develop our ear because we actually have to listen quite hard when we're uh, listening to the whirring I'm talking about when, you get, when you're trying to get the pitches to sit together really nicely. And so it's a good way of actually developing your ear too. So I really strongly recommend that everybody gets comfortable with it. But the principal usage, as I said earlier in this lesson, is definitely to double check myself. So if you're interested in harmonics, make sure you download the cheat sheet which comes with this, which will tell you where all the harmonics are on the neck and actually show you exactly uh, how to do this uh, harmonic tuning to itself, or tuning with harmonics rather, to itself. So make sure you grab the PDF there. And this is the first stage of kind of getting into harmonics. Then once you get uh, into that, you can start uh, creating pieces which is the really cool thing which is what Jacko did etc so like those chords etc or so all sorts of crazy stuff like that is possible once you start understanding how to how to use harmonics they're a really really cool soloistic tool but super super useful for making sure that your bass is in tune and it's something that every bass player should get down. So that was how to tune with harmonics. So if you'd like some more lessons on harmonics, make sure you do comment below and let me know and I can show you some of the amazing possibilities that are out there. If you've enjoyed this lesson, 
please do like it and share it on social. Leave a comment below and don't forget to download the PDF which will show you where all the harmonics lie on the neck. I've been James from eBay's Guitar and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for now.